Thank you for joining us again in another fine episode of Joan of Art. I'm Joan Fabian. Today we're going to talk to a San Antonio photographer, Leonard Siegler. And first, I'm going to go through all his images uh, on the screen so you can see, and then we'll talk about uh, the thinking artists behind them all. So if you look at a lot of his images, you'll see certain color elements. Um, you'll have form, and you'll have uh, texture, you'll have uh, abstraction, and you have more color, combination, composition, uh, movement, uh, more texture, and more movement. So, Leonard, thank you for coming to my show. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks Finally, for I get to pick your brain about oh. your art photos. Um, you went to San Antonio College, right? Yes, I did. And um, you've been working as a photographer here for 39 years. Yes. And that what you've been doing is commercial photography. Yes. And we're not going to talk about that as much. We're going to talk about your art. And could you talk a little bit about what got you excited about photography? Well, I used to see my mom uh, photograph everything. Uh, I remember I saw pictures of my six-year-old birthday party, and she took pictures of them. And what I really enjoyed was her perspective, not so much the content or her perspective on things because she used a, a brownie camera that you could put at your waist. Oh yeah, then you had to look down. And you have that perspective. You don't have this looking mm -hmm. down on people. You have mm -hmm. it with them. With them. You're Part with of it. Them, Part you know? it, it, it oh, so they were fantastic That's pictures. Uh, so later on, uh, my brother took me to a fireworks display at Kelly because he used to work at Kelly. Mm -hmm. So we used to have uh, picnics in the way in the back. And I said, okay, can I try that camera? Because I was looking at it, and it had a little feature on the side that you could push up. That put it on bulb setting. And it went, bulb setting? So I looked at the inside the lens, and when you press down on the shutter, the, the, the aperture, it would stay open. You know, the shutter mechanism would stay open. I'll try it out. So I went down there with black and white film, ISO yeah. 100, yeah. Uh, 1620, 120, film, yeah. 6, 620, 620. and uh, I put it on the, on the fender of the car and I pointed it up at the sky as the fireworks are going off and I just hold it down. Because as, yeah. as long as you yeah. hold it down, that shutter was open. So I, I did all that that night and then I went and got it processed and I was, quite, I was amazed. Said, and you didn't looked, know how it was going to turn out. I didn't out. know how it turned out. That was a, that was a beauty of film mm -hmm, photography back mm -hmm. then. You didn't know what you surprise. Gonna, you didn't know what you're. You didn't have this instant uh, on Facebook, no, social media, no, digital, no. wham. No. No. You had to go and look through. You the had pictures. to go through the you pictures. Through the wow. And it, I did that. Yeah. And that camera did that. I didn't know the camera could do that. You know. So yeah. you mean I made a connection with the camera, and uh, so that got me started back then. It's her little her little. The yeah. little 620 camera. Yeah. And then I didn't I didn't own a camera until I was a junior in high school. Mm -hmm. So how old were you when this uh, firework uh, shot took uh, place? I must have been maybe 12, 13. Wow. That young like that. and then thinking about how, how yeah, to work yeah. it. And I didn't think about it at all after that. I'm just yeah. going, okay. Uh, that was cool. But then later on, uh, oh, yeah, well, I shot with uh, another Kodak. I took. I wanted an internship to, to Washington, oh, so I worked for Sanyo. That's right. Yeah. And uh, they gave me an internship over there. I worked at the Department of Agriculture, and I took my little Kodak Instamatic. Yeah, yeah. Everything. I did the best I could. Yeah. I was composing, trying to get the Washington Monument so and all these they, things. So they mm. uh, gave you this 
this award to come there and take pictures? No, not to take pictures, but to work at the uh, uh, the Department of Agriculture. Oh, wow. It was to expose so us to... It was kind of like an internship. Yeah, it was yeah. to expose uh, Hispanic kids to the world. Yeah. And it was quite a culture shock. And a lot of the kids that went there, they couldn't take it. They they started crying when wow. they, they were homesick. They, they but you, you fell in love with it. I loved it. It was fantastic. So the money I made that summer, that's when I bought my first camera. Wow. And what was your first camera? It was an old Miranda, <laughs> 35 millimeter. Yeah. I bought it from the guy that used to run the. Uh, Photoshop at, I don't know if you ever knew Fed Mart on the south side, he, he ran the photo uh, oh, okay. department there and he had yeah. one and I bought it from wow. him. Wow. And that started it right there. You know, that yeah, was really, yeah. really cool. I had a lot of fun with that. Then I went to high school, I was uh -huh. a photographer in high school for the yearbook. And, and then you came to San Antonio College and you were working in the commercial arts. I was, I came to San Antonio College first First thing out of high school, I came. I took my basics in, and I was disillusioned with it. I mm -hmm. Didn't. Mm -hmm. So There's something I went away. important about having the basics. Uh, yes, yes. And then I went away, and I still did photography. I shot, uh, uh, did a lot of photography weddings with my brother because mm -hmm. he was a wedding photographer. So oh, I, your I, brother's a photographer. Yes, my brother's. A, he was a wedding wow, photographer. So, it, so it's in, he's in the you one, guys' blood. He's yeah. the one that got me yeah. started. But your mother and your brother. She influenced me yeah. a lot. Yeah, wow. with that. That is really cool. Yeah, and I look at some of their photographs today and I think they're amazing. They're amazing pictures. Yeah, you have to save them. those for yes. you to see the, the progress yes. that you've done. Yes, yes, that's one of my big projects. I'm mm -hmm. kind of looking for those photographs and digitizing them and right. archiving them. You know? Right, yeah. yeah, especially because now you're you're going to do fine art photography full time. Well. I guess you can call it in, that. In an because every, to life. Everything, everything. But you always see like a photographer. My yes, all my photography is fine art photography. That's the way I right. shoot. Yeah, you have to. Otherwise, you can't get through the day. Right, right. right. So and, so, and and in fact, I've taught my wife how to, how to do photography. She's. I have to admit, she's a lot better. <laughs> really? With her phone. Okay. She's an amazing, yeah. an amazing photographer with her phone. So. Well, it's amazing how much uh, everybody has become a little better photography. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the photos that you've done uh, early on, you'll see the quality has really increased with the, the electronics, mm -hmm. the, the mechanisms, mm -hmm. the digital format. I know you talked about uh, beforehand about your purchase of a first digital camera. Can you talk a little bit about that? That's, that's really interesting. Okay, that purchase of the first digital camera was the same kind of feeling I got when I was able to do timed exposure with that little brownie. Mm -hmm. I'm going, I can't believe. You were freed up. I was freed up, and I, but I, I couldn't believe how much uh, creative freedom you had because I didn't have to choose film, I didn't have to choose color, black and white, camera, lens. Mm -hmm. Everything was there in that one camera and I could do whatever I wanted. And, I, and so I did, I experimented with all kinds, as you can see in some of my photos, I yeah. experimented with yeah. everything. So all these, these images that, uh, like um, the graffiti one, and all of those are, are taken by, with a digital camera. Yes, yes. And, uh, before you were working in color also? Yes, some. Some, mm -hmm, but it was mm -hmm. black and white too. I, I preferred black and white. Because in, you in could develop it. Because I could then. develop it, I could afford it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really enjoyed black and white mm -hmm. a lot. Because it, it brings out the texture? Yeah, and it forces you to compose your pictures. Exactly. It forces you to, 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 to get the correct lighting mm -hmm. for what uh, feeling you want. Right. In color, usually let the color do that for you. Right. You know? But okay. in black and white, I, I just I just like black and white. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think real photographers, I mean, they love both, uh, but there's something about developing your first black and white photo and watching that image come in you know, to the developer. Another part of the fascination I have with photography, I've ne I'll never be not surprised by photography. It's just... It's, there's always something there's else. There's always something else that you, uh, you yeah. know, I'm amazed at that I can do with photography. And it's part of my discovery. I'm a very curious person. I love to learn new things, see see how things work. Mm -hmm. And so that's just a part of, of my interest. An extension, of, extension of, of my... Yeah, mind. yeah, taking a part and seeing what, what could come out. Yes. Experimentation. Yes. Yes. Mistakes are good. Invention. Uh -huh. I mean, there's uh -huh. all kinds of things that go along with right, it. Right, you know? right. So we're going to talk about um, some of your photos. Um, 
there's that one with the goldfish. Um, <clears throat> he did talk about um, the colors and the movement. I know movement is a, an element of art that we talk about. Though the photograph is not actually moving, it shows, it conveys movement, just like how the fish are going through and creating waves. Can you talk about uh, how you came about taking this picture? Well, it, it, it stems from my fascination with water. Mm -hmm. uh, you've seen a lot of my photographs. And it's at the Japanese water. garden. It's at the Japanese garden. Okay. And, and the, the water there is so, it's so beautiful. And uh, uh, I think fish are, are beautiful. <laughs> they, yeah. they, they, I really like fish and birds uh, because they all flow through. A substance. Yes, a substance. Air, the water. The air, water, they, they, they can mm -hmm. flow through it mm -hmm. freely. And, and you try and to capture that, and I think you did. I try to capture that, too, but I just, I, I, I really like the, the interplay between the color and the water and Reflection. reflections and all those things mm -hmm. that, that water uh, gives mm -hmm. me, you mm -hmm. know. I just, Sometimes uh, people have a problem with taking pictures of waters because it, it's just fluid. Mm -hmm. It's always moving, so you can't, you can't really capture it you'll get a blur but mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like that's a problem you know you just no 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 i my next venture will probably be underwater photography but not necessarily of things underwater but yeah of looking, looking up, up because there's a reflection from the top of the water down mm -hmm. and, and it gives so you have another, another filter and get another filter and it gives you another abstract look at things mm -hmm. which is what i like yeah. to do i like to yeah. look at things differently it's and a look different at a different, experience very different experience mm -hmm. yeah. and it has a lot to offer there's mm -hmm. there's so many things around us that, that have a lot to offer us we just don't notice them right right but you you learn to see better yes. when you're looking through a camera. Yes. I feel yes. that, you know, you're, you're asking yourself questions. What is it that's enticing me? What is it that's making me interested in, in taking this picture? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, how can I make it myself? You know, all those questions that you ask, make mm -hmm. it yourself. And then that, you know, I'm going to get uh, spiritual here on you. <laughs> that's okay, because that's because, what art does. Because when I get, I get in that zone of uh -huh. looking at things, wondering what they're going to look like, I'm, I'm a better person. I'm, yeah. more, I'm, more, I'm, yeah. not, I'm calmer. Yeah. You know, I'm it, it's a meditative this, this, quality Yes, to it. it is. That's exactly it, what it is. It, it, it opposed to, like, doing social media. You know, you're taking a selfie. It's about you. It's like, look at how I look. It, it's not about that. It's about reflection, enlightenment. And enlightenment doesn't necessarily have to be spiritual. Right. It could be uh, intuitive thinking, uh, ways of looking at things yes. differently, yes. getting out of your yes. normal routine. Quit being afraid to look at things that are different. Right. <laughs> Just like, don't be afraid to eat a dish from another yes. country. Yes. Because that opens you up to that experience. Yes. And then when you do that with photography and art. Well, then you're not going to be prejudiced. Right. How could you? Because be you prejudiced. find all these pleasures. Right. Your pleasures expand. You get more uh, enlightenment and more uh, peace in your life. Exactly. exactly. And we live hectic lives, and I think that's what your photography does for many people when they look at it. I just not only for you. Right. That's and that's why I do why I like to do photography. It gives right. me a lot of peace. Right. Another one that is really fascinating to me is the one of the fencing. Of the old building, um, they will show that one. Um, uh, no, that's not the one. That well, we'll talk about that one. Mm -hmm. um, this one is Scoby. It's Scoby. Yes, yes. And so um, I have a fascination with uh, buildings and construction mm -hmm. of buildings and their angles, but mostly the angle. And how we've got some real nice lines right there to separate mm -hmm. the organic from the inorganic, man-made mm -hmm. and then and naturally made, which is between the building and the sky, you know. And then it shows all the man-made structures, but how they relate to all the the natural things. And it's very and, abstract, also. And and I love angles. I love lines, beautiful lines, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I photograph cars. I, sh I probably should have included some of my car photography yeah, because yeah. I have such beautiful, the cars are, it's just beautiful lines and, and it's just. So it's I, amazing I, how your eye goes through the piece. It kind of goes mm -hmm. up from the bottom and it goes up to that 
It almost looks like an organic slate of something. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then it goes around that halo behind it. Mm -hmm. it il it's illuminated. It's, uh, you mm -hmm. don't really know what it is. No. I mean, no. I know because, you know, he had told me it's, uh, mm -hmm. that it's SCOBY. And I know that, that paneling on the, on the side, it's a very unique building. But the way you photographed it, you were, what were you, laying down on the ground looking up? No, I was just looking up. I was just looking up. It was a project I called Looking Up. I did a lot of photographs throughout the campus of mm -hmm. just looking straight up and photographing straight up. And uh, it was, I have to give myself uh, projects. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> to stay just to creative. Just to see things to, differently. Just to see things differently and to keep my interest mm -hmm. in, in what I like to do. Mm -hmm. you, know? you find yourself going closer to things? One time I went all the way down through downtown on my bike and photographed just the tops of buildings. It's just the and top I, of and buildings. And I, yeah. I, I archived a lot of the buildings that have been torn down, actually. Right. But uh, the, way, the way it used to be. And... Um, mm -hmm. My brother, one time when I was younger, he said, come on, let's go downtown. And he said, I'm gonna teach you how to shoot lights. And it was, it happened to be Christmas lights. And mm -hmm. he said, this is how you do it. And this at night? we're walking around downtown, mm -hmm. photographing the lights, wow. you know? And just li little little projects like that, that, that you yeah. put upon yourself. It, it makes pushes you, you. It pushes you, and, and, but it also forces you to slow down, uh -huh. stop, uh -huh. look at what's going on around you. Right, and, it, and it's, you don't want to be safe. You have to go out there where it's dangerous, and you might make a mistake, because what happens when you make a mistake? You learn from it. You learn from it. I mean, and you become a better person. Exactly. Um, that's something that um, many artists do in all types of medium. It's true. You know, I'll be painting and all of a sudden, you know, why am I, I splashing this paint down on this lower level? And then I realize there's nothing of interest down there. So I'm, I'm a firm believer that, the, that that has to do with your subliminal conscious coming up and saying, hey, look, you need to look at something you're overlooking. But we don't allow that uh, as much. No, you don't. You have to be open to your mistakes because sometimes your mistakes are some of the best. Some of my best photographs were mistakes mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I was trying to do something else. I was forcing it. I was forcing it. I was forcing, forcing it. it. And, and I made a mistake. And I'm going, that's the shot. It is. That's, that's the image I was yeah. looking for, you know. Somebody uh, higher above said, look, dude, you're looking in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that uh, graffiti piece that... Um, you took it off of a wall. It's a, you know, very, very close-up graffiti piece. No, not that one. The other one that's a little, yeah, that one. Thank you. Um, you know, talk about this. Well, one. I, I admire graffiti artists. I know they're, they're a scourge of the, of the earth because they're, they're facing property. But uh, I, I overlook that. I look at how, how can they come up with such beautiful, intricate designs with a spray can mm -hmm. at night? <laughs> probably yeah. at night because it can illegally, they yeah. illegally and it's so effortless you can look at these things and it's it's just it's just amazing so I decided to chronicle them a lot of them were from around the neighborhood here at SAC most of them mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's just I'm amazed by them I'm just amazed mm -hmm. so I shot this this is supposed to be laying down on its side so I turned it up up and it looks like a Mayan god. You know, mm -hmm. It was for a poster mm -hmm. that we were designing. Yeah, it's like there's the nose on mm -hmm. the right mm -hmm. and the big eye, and he's looking up right, to the sky. Right. And then you have the Texas star over there yes, too. Yes, yes. So you could do you could you could interpret that any way mm -hmm. you want. Uh, so you took a, you took liberties with something that was already there. Right. And right. you made it your own. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, we do that a lot uh, in art. We'll take something, digest it, and then manipulate it. And it's almost like a collaborative effort. But with graffiti, it's, it's anonymous. Yes, it's, it's anonymous. anonymous. One of my so buildings are a work of art. Right. But you've taken it yes. and you made it your yes. own. I've always struggled with that all, all my career because one of my instructors says photography is not an art. You're stealing images that are already created by someone else. Mm -hmm. and well, some people believe that. And making yeah. it your own. And I'm going, 
Okay, whatever you want to believe, I still like right, doing what I'm doing, right. okay? I, I, it's not going to degrade me. It did for a while, but then I go, ah. But it challenged you. Yes, it did. It challenged you to prove him wrong. Yes, yes. And, you know, some they thought that photography would die, you know, with the media, with social media, because everybody's doing it, mm -hmm. you know? But real photography, real innovative photography, art photography, <clears throat> is alive and well, and it's really pushed it. It's much better. That's why I did the, that other, the next piece, the bars, mm -hmm. and, and that. I show the the mm. one, the graffiti with the grids. The the first one that you showed first. Uh, I guess we got lost here. There we go. That one. No, not that one. Is well, that, no, no, that's oh, that's, that's the one, the one I'm talking wanted. about. Yeah. That's okay. the one I'm talking. That's the back of an old building over here. It's it's a combination of tin mm -hmm. uh, roofing and mm -hmm. uh, texture that's going across mm -hmm. it from uh, trying to apply a wire with concrete over it. And I'm I love going, that. And I'm going. I, I could turn that into something else, and, mm -hmm. and I did. I, I just. I can get lost pushed, in that. I pushed it and pushed it and pushed yeah. it until I got what I wanted, and it's just. I wasn't using paint mm -hmm. or paint But brushes, it looks painterly. But I, that's what I want. That's and what that's I want. And that's a visual element. And uh, so then I said, you know what? That's art. That is art. <laughs> I don't care what that guy said. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I, so, look, you got texture. Right. You've got composition. Mm -hmm. You don't know what it is, so right. it makes you think. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's color. Color is an element of paint, mm -hmm. painterly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it's just an amazing photograph. So I finally achieved what I wanted to achieve. And, it, and it's a digital. It's digital. And That's you right. you took your liberties with it, mm -hmm. and you made it your own. Yes, yes. yes. I mean, how um, cool is that? Yeah. Anyway, I feel good about that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think uh, one photography, uh, one photograph always leads us to another. Like yes. one painting will lead you to another. Mm -hmm. um, you're you're never totally satisfied you're always seeking and that's good mm -hmm. you know you know say okay i made i made the greatest painting ever i'm putting down painting i'm never going to do painting again mm -hmm. it, that's not possible no it's not it's because not. you know there's always another photo waiting for you yes yes there's always something that's going to challenge you mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's important to it, to all arts you know that you you be challenged and what was the biggest challenge you've ever had to face as a photographer? Photographing people. Photographing people. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Why is that? Because of, I know the well, reason why, but uh, it's 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 too uh, too abstract to me. It's abstract. Abstract. Because I, you I, don't know I, what's inside. I photograph people the way I see them, yeah. and they totally they freak out. They freak out. No, that's not the way I want to be. That's the one way I want to be portrayed. I'm going. How you do, get people how, angry, right? Yes. How do I know that? Yeah. You know, it's your responsibility right. to make right. yourself presentable before you come to me. Right. Why are you getting after me? The camera doesn't lie. Right. Why are you, why are you getting after me for? <laughs> I'm just doing yeah. my job, right. you know? So I had a, a real challenge with that. So I learned how to light a little bit differently. Uh -huh. I learned some of the filters and things mm -hmm. like that. And things to soften them up, to make them, them up, look more right. like the glamour photos that people expect. I guess. But you that's, know, that's why people were taking so many selfies, because they really don't love themselves, I'm sorry, they don't love themselves enough, they gotta have reaffirmation. It's like, oh, this is a great is. picture of me. I haven't studied that yet, I don't know what's That's going on. That's a good thing. I don't know what's I going think, on. I think once you, you start, people can't stop. It's like, all right, all right. So I have to really photo. talk with people before I photograph them, that way I know what they expect, right. and I'll give them the product yeah. they want. So there's a psychology involved in taking pictures of people. Oh, sure is. You have, to, you have to there's be so able much. to re make them relax. Otherwise, they feel like you're taking a picture of me is like a gun. That you're going to be shot. Mm -hmm. That's what I was told when I first started out. And, and I believe that. You have this. That's when cameras were really big. When you mm -hmm. had the, the ones mm -hmm. with the tripod and you or whatever. And then the flash. Flash. That freaked Boom. them out. What, what yeah. was that? That's the, like, yeah. Momentarily like, blinded. You know, and they're going, yeah. that's too bright. We don't like that. Oh. Right. He's scaring the baby. <sighs> All of that. But so, anyway. so, so what are some of the techniques you do to relax somebody in front of the camera? Well, I get in front of the camera. And I say, this is where you're going to stand. This is how you're going to stand. This okay. is what you're going to do. Give them something to do. You give them something. They look at me. When they see me do it, they don't know what to do. Of course, a lot of right. people learn visually. 
But most importantly, I get them to breathe, breathe. And if they're not breathing, I make them laugh. When yeah. they laugh, yeah. all your facial muscles relax. Right. And then I get the real shot. And then you get a nice shot, yeah. not like a, a cardboard right. person right. there that's freaked out. Exactly, exactly. No. And then they say, wow, that wasn't so bad. It's like I'm giving a little kid a shot or something. <laughs> yeah, that's what, like, what? So anyway, I've learned. I've learned that. I, well, that that's fun. I, had to learn I mean, that. it's always good. To I had to learn it because I was, I grew up by myself. I wasn't like an only child. Yeah. I had two other brothers, but they're much older than I am. So I never had the social skills of of that, or I never walked in other people's shoes to understand that part of photography. So I had so to learn it. So you were forced to. I had to learn it. I had to learn it. And then, you know, now you know how to manipulate people to get a good photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And still they're not happy, right? No. No, Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they say, not. oh, I'm not this way, I'm that way, I'm that way. But, but you, when you take a picture, you're like, yeah, I'm happy with this. Mm -hmm. This is a good. There was an article, was a, I guess someone went through the West of uh, the United States and photographed Indians back in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. All they would do was put up a white sheet and they'd bring these Indian people in from all over, all different yeah. tribes. Yeah. And they had all their feathers and everything all else. Their, and um, they would just stand there and, and they would yeah. shoot black and white yeah. photos. I thought those are so fantastic because it shows everything. It shows their yeah. face, shows their age. Yeah. It yeah. shows Ivy all, Rachel, everything. And every it's just, texture. I think that's fantastic. The skins that they That's wore. the kind of photography mm -hmm. I want to do with people mm -hmm. someday. Yeah. You know, that would be but cool. see, that's interesting because Indians, well, I was told that Indians believe that if you take Yes. The picture you're capturing some of their soul. Do yes. you believe that? I, I've seen it. I went to Santa Fe and I tried to photograph some of the Indians that were mm -hmm. selling their wares mm -hmm. around the, the, the... And they didn't want and it. And they, would, they yeah. would block their face or look down or bring mm -hmm. up something. And, and then someone told me, you know, they don't they don't. Yeah, like they that. don't. So that's when I learned I, I had to respect the wishes. And ask people. And Can ask I people. Oh, right, right. It's just not, it's not automatic. Mm -hmm. No. Right. No. And that's so important. Yeah. It is very yeah. important. Yeah. So the next question I, I like to ask uh, everybody that I interview is, if you were, let's say, a professor or a mentor or somebody, what valuable piece of advice would you give students of photography, young, old, whatever? What would you, what would you think that is important for them to abide by? Well, they're going to have to learn uh, what exactly they want to do with photography because there's a lot of, of uh, professions or different aspects of photography that are, they're not fun at all. Mm -hmm. It's all about ego. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to put up with that. And so... So you got to be tough skin. You have to be tough skin, but you have to understand what you're doing before you get into it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the photographers that are most the happiest, the most successful, are the ones that are doing the kind of work that uh, brings out their culture. Mm -hmm. That you're photographing a culture, you're photographing their traditions, mm -hmm. you're photographing. Those are the kind of photographers that I think are the most happiest. You know, mm -hmm. even even. Uh, even with uh, inanimate objects, you're, right. you're, you're photographing. Even with graffiti, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because they are making a statement. Mm -hmm. They're making a big statement. Mm -hmm. You know. So that's why I did that poster. That poster has all, I'm sure all there's a lot of gang members, yeah. gang signs yeah, in there, all book. kinds of stuff in there. I, I, yeah. I just have a respect for those artists. Right. I have a respect for anyone who's talented that can do anything that you're and they not. they stick to it. They stick to it, you know, like playing an instrument or painting mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. dancing or anything like that. It's just such a gift mm -hmm. that I have a lot of respect for people mm -hmm. like that. So you don't give up, you just keep going. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's important. I mean, I think a lot of our art students, they think uh, they're going to go out there and they're going to blow people away. And they say, wow, this is great. You're going to be famous. You're no. Gonna, you're going to lose yourself. You're going to lose yourself. You're going to be down times, a lot more down times. And then you're going to have a little bit of success that's going to get you to that, that light. And also how you measure your success is going to change. Yes. And you better not be uh, afraid of criticism. Right. The criticism is going to come, yeah. whether you think that's a great photo or not. Exactly. The, my, some of my worst photos are the people that are the ones that the people most liked. 
Yeah. I, I yeah. had no idea. That's right. what, what's in their head. It's all, always somebody's opinion and how what what they're come where they're coming right. from. So maybe they should do the, their photography to make money, and then on the side they should do the photography they really love to do. This is which what I did. Right. Right. And that's what kept me sane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a, that's another important. You're successful if you're still sane after doing all that you're doing. That's success. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, because, mm -hmm. you know, it can really break you. Yes, it can We break forget you. about the money and the fame mm -hmm. because that's really, that's, that ain't going to last. You know, there's always somebody better than you. Always. Always. So if you can enrich your life and at the same time enrich others yes. with, your, with your photography, uh, your work, uh -huh. your investigations, of the life around you, the culture around you. You got you're it. You're successful. You got it. You yeah. Got it. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Leonard, oh, you're for welcome. coming. You're welcome. I really enjoyed looking at your photos. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for another episode of Joan of Art, and I'm, I'm glad to be here and talk about art so you can learn and appreciate art that is not only easy to recognize what's in it, but art that challenges you, pushes you, that makes you feel uncomfortable. It gets you out of your routine into another dimension. And that's what I'm trying to do as Joan of Art, and hope I won't be burned at the stake. See you next time.